Today we're looking at a simple ProMaster van conversion done by a shop in Colorado. I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of the design decisions that they made while building this van. Hey, it's Matt from Dave Matt Vans. This is our 90th van build since early last year. Okay, just some first impressions on this van. This is the smallest ProMaster. And you can see the inside is very simple. There's not too much happening in here. It's, this is most of the van that of what we see on the screen right now. There's a basic kitchen, bed, bench. That's really all. That's really all there is. Plain and simple. Just get the things you need and nothing you don't. This here is our base build uh, with just a few add-ons. And what I do want to start this video with is while we are drawn to this build, it is still right in our price point of under $25,000 for everything you're going to see in this build. Hop on in, David. Just going to get a quick tour of our base package here and the few add-ons that we have. So here is our new kitchenette. We've shown this in some videos before. Our favorite feature of this are the push lock drawers. So these drawers stay locked while you drive on the highway, push them into release, and then you get your slide out option here. So no more. That's pretty nice. And it's also a pretty cool style looks nice where um, in some ways it looks a little unfinished without the the handles on there but it looks very modern a lot of modern kitchens are doing something like this so you can have a modern kitchen in a van pretty sick drawers opening on the highway same simple sink set up here two seven gallon jugs one clean uh one gray and you can also see here for that pull drawer they have a little lock that keeps it in place as you drive it's important to have those because otherwise stuff will fly out of your cabinets and go everywhere. You need those on every cabinet and drawer in the van. An electric water pump to run those through. And there's not much water in there, but we'll give you a little show of what that does. Now, obviously that's not a huge water system, but it can be enough. In living in the Project Today van, Chase and I really just had that same amount of water. We had two of those jugs and then a gray water tank and it lasted us maybe a week at a time, those two jugs. And with that, we were trying to conserve water. So need to keep that in mind. Um, more water allows for more freedom. Water was definitely our bottleneck where if we were out in the middle of nowhere for a few days, then water was the thing that we needed to return to civilization to get. So if you can extend that bottleneck by putting in a more permanent water system that has more storage capabilities, then that's a positive. But here in a simple build, if you're just going out for a weekend trip, this is all you need. Here's our new fridge system here for 2020. We're putting these in all of our base builds. It is an Isotherm Cruise 85, super efficient fridge and gives you a lot of space. It's three times the size of our old slide out fridge. It's a really deep style dorm uh, fridge here and also a built in freezer. So you can keep some ice with you wherever you go. Looks really nice. These small fridges built for RVs or boats are very expensive for what they are. However, I think they're worth every penny. In order to have cold food, in order to carry food with you while you drive without having to constantly carry coolers with ice, having a fridge is so nice. And I think just makes you feel much more comfortable out on the road for extended periods of time. So although they're expensive, I highly recommend these fridges. As far as add-ons that this customer has chosen for his build, uh, we do have the Lagoon swing arm table here, which gives you some extra countertop space, as well as this dinette area here for people to sit at. Have not fully sure that the table looks slightly high. I don't know. I don't know if you can adjust the height with Lagoon tables, but but maybe you can, and then that's not a big deal. Meal, uh, etc. We have our two overhead cabinets, one above the kitchenette, great kitchen storage here. And then we also have our cabinet above the rear. This is generally used for clothes storage, soft goods, uh, extra storage for your bed area. Great place to put some books as well. You can see the storage here is very simple as well. Just four upper cabinets along the van. And I think in watching a lot of these van tours, people tend to go crazy and overdo it a bit of put storage everywhere, put a ton of doors everywhere, just go overboard with what they put inside a van. 
And yes, it's a small space. And you know, if you're living a very active lifestyle, have a lot of gear, you might need a lot of storage. But these upper cabinets are usually just used for food and clothes and simple things like that. So this van might be perfect just for one person who doesn't need that much space and then has the huge garage space under the bed to put bigger items. While we're in here, if you want to come underneath here, Dave, we do have our lithium battery upgrade. This has become one of our most popular options to add onto our base build. It is a 170 amp hour lithium battery made by Renogy. And what we say about these is lithium batteries are what people use in iPhones, what they're using in Tesla vehicles. It is the modern technology in batteries. Interesting that the, the electrical system is just out in the middle of that area. I mean, I can imagine in this van, that garage area is meant to be used for bikes or kayaks, stand-up paddle boards, any skis, any kind of gear that you have. And you don't really want that gear to be bumping up against your electro electrical system and potentially breaking something. So it might be nice to have some kind of area, something to cover that electrical system. It's good that it's ventilated, that the air can get in there because then that, because that's gonna extend the life of the electrical system, but probably would be nice to have something to protect those expensive electrical devices. Uh, and once again, I'm Matt from David Matt Vans. We thank you for following us and joining us on this adventure. I like the layout of that van. It's simple, it's basic, but it has the most important things that you need in order to live van life. I think people can look at some of the fancy van tours on YouTube, and although they're super cool, they can be a little intimidating because those vans can be quite expensive and inaccessible for a lot of people. There are such varying levels of van life from very, very cheap, you know, under $1,000 to build out a vehicle to people are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to build out a nice off-roading vehicle. I think this van is a great example of how you could comfortably live full-time in a van without really breaking the bank. If I were to live in this van full-time, I would probably one, increase the water system capacity a little bit, and then two, add an extra battery or two. This van seems like a great weekend warrior van to me where I could sit in a driveway and then every weekend could easily take it to go camping or do outdoor activities. And I know this was a super short video. I, I didn't have a chance this week to record a full tour review, but I want to just get, get a quick video out. So here we are. And David Matt Vans is an awesome local van company from where I'm from. I got to tour their facility and see a few of their vans. And it's super cool to see the operation they have going on. They're building a ton of these vans for people all around Colorado and all around the US. So fun to be able to take a little more in-depth tour and review of one of their vans. With that, I'll see you next Wednesday with a full van tour.